Good evening, my name is Stan Pickett, Mayor here of the City of Mesquite, and um, I'm, I'd like to call to order our special City Council meeting um, located here at the North Texas Regional Training Center, Texas A&M University's Engineering Extension Service, or better called TEKS. Um, it is 7.33 on um, Thursday night, October the 26th. Um, our meeting tonight is to hold a public hearing uh, as we consider looking at and evaluating uh, opportunities um, as we look at the different areas um, outside in our ETJ that we are continuing to just make continuing discussions over. Before we get to open up the public hearing tonight, um, you know, we understand that there were statements made uh, today to encourage people not to attend tonight. But we want to try to kind of explain uh, what we're doing here and why we're here. Uh, th this is an additional public hearing uh, in our ET that was scheduled for our ETJ. And we try to do that to make it convenient for any and all of the uh, people that lived out in the ETJ to come closer to their homes. However, our initial location that had been agreed upon that was offered as a meeting point in Kaufman County ETJ from Mesquite uh, told us late Tuesday afternoon that the meeting facility was no longer available, nor could we use anything on their property to meet. We had already provided notice uh, as required for the hearing to the people that planned on attending the meeting. So city staff began working trying to find an alternate location um, at, at a very late date and we felt like this location with the large meeting room uh, was the best place for us that was close and possible for people in the ETJ area to come to. The city is trying to conduct this meeting out here simply to be closer to those that may be affected. We were trying to continue our engagement of the, of the residents of Kaufman County. You know, we're working through a process, and it is just that. And I tried to make that clear, and I know it's very difficult, and I love emotions uh, sometimes take over. But we're working through a process. There's been nothing decided completely or wholeheartedly. As a matter of fact, after the initial notification of the ETJ area, uh, there has been a large, large portion of that that has been taken out and resolutions are passed to continue reducing the amount of area that uh, the city is just again going through a process of looking at. You know, we like to call this a fact-finding mission. We're, we're out trying to find, look at this entire area. And the other thing we're doing that I hope is coming clear and coming through all this, that it's just a listening endeavor. Uh, I, I would trust that many of you have seen that we are trying to respond in a positive manner to many of the comments you've made. I will tell you that you've touched our heads, but you've also touched our hearts during this time. I think the council has taken a lot of those comments into consideration as we continue to just walk down the process. For those of you that are here tonight, thank you for coming. We welcome your comments. It's just a part of our process and a part of this hearing. For those of you that are on Facebook Live, we're happy to have your comments too. We won't, aren't able to respond because they come in through social media, but we do uh, see those and get those. With that, I'd like to start uh, with item one, public hearing. Conduct a public hearing for the purpose of considering annexation of approximately 5.714 square miles of territory within the city of Mesquite's extraterritorial jurisdiction. This public hearing was previously scheduled to be held in the extraterritorial jurisdiction at the Heartland Fellowship Baptist Church for the convenience of the affected residents and property owners who are located within the approximately 5.714 square miles of territory under consideration for possible annexation. Heartland Fellowship Baptist Church notified the city on 10-24-2017 that the city would not be allowed to proceed with the meeting at their location. The time of the meeting has been delayed for the convenience of the public to allow transportation time between the two venues. Relocation and delay of this meeting is an urgent public necessity 
because the cancellation of Heartland Fellowship Baptist Church was unforeseen and the need to proceed with the noticed public hearing is imperative that we provide interested parties the opportunity to express their views on the annexation consistent with and in the spirit of chapter 43 of the Texas Local Government Code presenting an urgent public necessity. This time I'd like to open the public hearing. We don't have anyone cards that have been presented, but I'd like to ask if anyone uh, would, would like to come forward and speak tonight. Yes, sir. We have a microphone here. You probably see the setup. And we have, it has been recorded. So if you could just give us your name and address for the record. Yes, please. Thank you very much. I'm Mac Bean. Uh, at my address is 1043 Masters Drive, Crandall, Texas, and uh, I own land at uh, 10216 FM 2757 in Mesquite. Uh, Mayor, Councilman, Mr. Keeley, uh, I was annexed into the city uh, 11 years ago, and we had some things that happened then that I thought that I might share with you with the hopes that it wouldn't happen again, depending on where this goes to. Um, and of course, 11 years ago, we were talking about, there was, you know, as a different mayor, different councilman. We heard more or less the same story that, we're, that we've heard at these other meetings. The fact that uh, Mr. Gertson got up and with the maps and everything and said that I-20 corridor is the gateway into Mesquite and that growth was fixing to explode out there and that Mesquite needed to control the growth. And that was 11 years ago. Now we didn't want to go into the city. Uh, we liked it just the way it was. We went and talked to some attorneys and they said we didn't have a case. They come back in about five years after y'all hadn't done anything and bring a half a million dollars with you. And they would do something. Well, it's been 11 years now, but a few things that occurred that I would like not to see this go around if y'all do decide to annex it in. And that is, you know, I realize the annex, annexation law says that as long as y'all stay under <clears throat> 100 rooftops that y'all don't have to provide services any better than what they already have, which means basically that Sigaville, I mean not Sigaville, but uh, Forney can keep making the uh, fire calls out there. And basically, if y'all keep, you know, a patrol car out there, you know, once or twice a day, then that's about all you have to do, really. Now, I know that's not what this council wants to do, and I know that this council doesn't just blindly follow what the staff says, because uh, one thing that occurred that still makes me mad today when I think about it is that within 48 hours, or I'm going to say within 72 hours after we were annexed, we got our first heaping helping of city services, which were code enforcement people running up and down the road out there trying to give us tickets because our hay meadows wouldn't cut uh, to suit the city. And I know that Councilman Dan Alderman is... Uh, over that district out there, and I know that he's not going to let something like that happen again because the first time a code enforcement person goes down there at the end of Kelly Road and tells the Kellys that they can't park on the grass, I wouldn't want to be that code enforcement person. So I hope that th those mistakes are not made again like they were then. But we're talking about freedoms here, and we're talking about trying to take the city's codes and go out there and enforce them in the county where those people have lived for years. And here's the way, <clears throat> I mean, I, I know I've heard the same story that if you farm, you can keep farming. But here's the deal with that. Those people, when fall gets here and they rake their leaves up and they burn them just like they do every year, y'all can be sending a fire truck out there to citate them for you know, burning in the city. When Pat Kelly shoots a cow out from uh, 
eating one of his baby calves out there, and you send the police out there, you know, to try to sod him for shooting a firearm in the city. Or when dove season opens up and those people go dove hunting out there like they've done for years, or when the 4th of July comes along and they want to go buy some fireworks and shoot some fireworks on their acreage out there, which they've been doing forever. You see, we're talking about taking people's freedoms away from them. But here's what I would suggest. And I heard Judge Catherine Cryer say this in the, Senate, the second Senate annexation that I've been a part of in my life. She said, I will allow those people out there to continue to live their lives just like they're living today. <clears throat> and I'll welcome them back in my court if they have any problems. But I would like to see uh, Councilman Allman, Allman give these people a written guarantee that whatever ones are taken into the city will get to live their lives just like they, they've been living them. I would, I would address that if you don't mind, because one councilman does not have the authority to do that. But I appreciate your comments, so I just, that's a little difficult to ask any one of us to sign something. We don't have the authority to do that. I, and I'm not saying anything wrong, I'm just, I want you to make sure that you understand we, we, we actually do not have that authority by our charter. And I don't mean to interrupt you, Mr. Bean. Go ahead. See, that's the problem right there, is that y'all can't do that. Uh, do you mind if we interact a little bit? No. Okay. Mr. Beam, thank you for your comments. I, I really appreciate them. And, and actually, we, we have been making an effort to reach out to the homeowners and to enter into written agreements with them that would actually structure a way in which they can continue to do what they're doing and preserve what they're doing out there. Uh, while at the same time balancing uh, the interest that we have, which is the ultimate control of any development that might occur in the future. And so it, it's, it's really a two-way street for us to be able to do that. And, and we have been working very hard, and I know staff's been working very hard, and we're continuing to do that. And I would encourage anyone that is uh, out there that is, is part of the areas that we're still seeking to annex to come and talk to us, sit down, and let's get a dialogue going about uh, an agreement that we can all move forward with. And uh, I, would, I would just encourage people to, to reach out and do that. And to the extent that you know folks, have them contact us. Have them contact staff. Have them contact council members. But we're more than happy to sit down and have an actual dialogue on, 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 on what it is they're looking for, what their concerns are, and whether or not we can ultimately come to a common solution. So. I appreciate that, those comments, and, and I think we as a council are, are eager to, to engage in that situation or engage in those discussions. Well, there's a lot of the city codes, you know, like parking cars on grass. If a person's got 20 acres out there, uh, that's just like I never would have thought 72 hours after you took us into the city 11 years ago that y'all would be sending people out there, and it was harassment. I mean, it was y'all's way of welcoming us into the city by sending code enforcement people out there telling us that, that we were gonna cut our grass, our hay fields out there to meet city codes. And those, what y'all live by in the city is not what those people live by out there, you know? They've got acres, whereas the codes that y'all are all about is people that live on little lots that y'all are trying to get them to clean their, their place up and everything. but. I appreciate y'all listening to me, and I just want to make y'all aware of some of the things that I'm concerned about. And, and, and I appreciate that. And, and the agreements that we've been speaking of, we can address those types of situations in those agreements. Uh, and, and so that's, that's the kind of dialogue that, that we're looking to have with folks. And, and so far, um, we're not, we haven't been experiencing much of a dialogue and, and so I, I've been eager to do it. We've met with some homeowners today and some property owners today, and I think it was eye-opening for both of us, and, and, and I'm happy to say that it looks like we're gonna have some continued dialogue and discussion. Um, but I, I just can't say it enough 
that there is a lot of flexibility in these agreements. And, and I think that there's a way to achieve and balance everyone's interest and ultimately move forward. And, and I apologize for the way in which you were treated 11 years ago. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know what took place then. Um, yes, as a council, as an institution, we, we own that. Uh, but I can assure you that there's not any desire from any of the council members on this council to treat anyone like that. And, and we've, we're never about treating anyone like that. So um, I, uh, you know, I'm sorry that that happened. And, and I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that it doesn't happen this time. And, and, and just because you did mention my name a couple of times, Mr. Beam, and mm -hmm. just to express my thoughts and feelings as well, I, along with uh, uh, Councilman Noche, and I'm sure with all the others, um, we're open to dialogue. We're open to ready to listen to the folks out there and to do what we can. And we know there's a difference between country living and city living. And, and we need to hear the people and make sure that we don't make um, similar, similar decisions like previous 11 years ago. And uh, so anyway, but I appreciate what you said. I'll say a few more things. <clears throat> you don't know how hard it is when you have a dog that's used to roaming over 20 acres to all of a sudden, uh, you know, have a dog pound running up and down the road picking people's dogs up, man. You know? It's just, and you know, the other thing that I, I was really unhappy with is that 11 years went by, and you know, and Polo Ridge should have been built, I think it was scheduled, it should have already been built out there as far as, you know, what the original plans were that, I, that I've read, you know? But um, it just, it makes me sad to think that 11 years ago, you had a little town like Wilmer out there that's got one fire station, uh, a fire chief, and either two or three paid firemen. They had no infrastructure out there, but they were willing to give uh, people a tax abatement because they couldn't afford to put the infrastructure in. Now that other council, I'm not talking about y'all, I'm talking about that council 11 years ago. They said, absolutely no, we're not giving tax abatements. Well look what Wilmer's got out there now. Uh, they gave 10 years of tax abatements to get people to put in the infrastructure out there, but look what they got now. Whereas we've got absolutely nothing out there, we don't even have any infrastructure out there. So I'd like to see a council that's willing to work with some of these developers uh, to get something going out there. But I sure appreciate y'all letting me speak. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Beam. We appreciate it very much. Mr. Beam, uh, I would also like to echo a lot of what my colleagues, uh, Councilman Noche and Councilman Alman just expressed. And you and I have had a number of conversations over the last few years about this corridor in this area here. In fact, several months ago, uh, Councilman Alamon held a town hall meeting in this room to talk about where we go in the future. And in fact, a lot of what we're doing right now was discussed in that meeting to, to those who seem to think that this was just a last minute endeavor of ours as a city. Uh, and, and I appreciate you pointing out that, that that was a different council 11 years ago, um, somewhat of a different staff as well. Um, we're doing things very differently today. Uh, we're not perfect, we make mistakes, but we're working very hard to make sure that the concerns that you're talking about, and I think Councilman Noche said it well a while ago, we're sensitive to those things. In fact, I'm very disappointed that we don't have folks here tonight as we did the last two meetings because each meeting that we have, I'm certainly learning things and it's, it's helpful to me to hear their concerns and their thoughts and I'd like to think we can learn together and, and, and keep that dialogue that it's a benefit and blessing for uh, the folks in that area out here as well as uh, the city of Mesquite. Um, our desire has never been to, and I think I can speak for all of us, to take in a bunch of homes out here. In fact, if we could make it zero, I think we would. I certainly would. Um, we have cut down as, as close as we can. We may even cut some more. As the mayor said, this is still in discussions and in a process. But I think all of our desire is to do something very nice out here 
and to make sure that things that we don't want don't come in out here. Uh, the kind of inappropriate uses we've spoke of the last couple of meetings. Uh, so we have some control over this zoning out here so we don't have uh, lots of things that we would all not be too happy about. Uh, we want to make sure that for people who will in the future be paying city taxes that weren't before, that they do get what they need and we do provide the services in a uh, timely manner as soon as we can for them. And I agree with you. Uh, I don't know that we need code enforcement guys and animal shelter guys out here when we got plenty of work for them in our uh, subdivisions back that way. Uh, so I appreciate you bringing these things up. Uh, I assure you, your concerns do not fall on deaf ears. Uh, we want to work with you uh, and all the folks out here. And I'll, and I'll say this, I believe that we can, if we do this right in the coming weeks and months and years, that you and others will be proud of what's happening out here and I think folks uh, that we may have to annex or not annexing will see this very differently because this is a different time. This is a different council. We're trying to do something very good for the future for everybody. So thank you for your comments tonight, sir. I'd also like to welcome Councilman Casper. Thank you for coming. He um, rushed out here from another engagement tonight. We appreciate you coming. I do have a card uh, that's been presented. I don't know if you wanted to come speak. Uh, Carol Stevenson, did you want to come forward or just wanted to? Thanks for coming here tonight. And yes, ma'am, we're using that microphone right there. If you could give us your name and your physical address, please, just for our records. Carol Stevenson, 1853 Lemonwood, Mesquite. I would have been here sooner, but I couldn't find it. Yes, Took several times around. Um, I am definitely against annexation. The people who live out here would have lived in Mesquite if they wanted to. And if Mesquite is going to do nothing but take the land and not provide services, you know, that's one thing that's not good. But the other thing is Bruce is saying, and I respect Bruce very much, but he's saying we don't want what we don't want out here. There are people already out here. It should be what they want. My opinion means nothing to people who already live here. And I don't think that's being considered. Thank you very much. Anyone else tonight wishing to speak? Seeing no one else, um, thank you all for coming tonight. Since this is a called meeting, we, we are going to uh, adjourn to an executive session. Um, the City Council will now meet in executive session pursuant to the following section of the Texas Government Code, Section 551.071, to conduct a private consultation with its attorneys relating to pending or contemplated litigation, a settlement offer, or issues in which there exists a duty of the City Attorney to the governmental body under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Procedure Conduct of the State Bar of Texas. Following discussion executive session, the City Council will reconvene an open session where any final action will be taken. So. We're adjourned here. Thank you very much for being here tonight. We appreciate it.